But this is such a wonderful award to get because you know in advance you're going to get it. <laughs> and you don't have to sit there and squirm like I remember, you know, wondering if you're going to get it, you're not going to get it. And if you don't get it, you have to put on, oh, oh, such a happy face. I'm, I'm so happy to lose. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you all know what I mean, right? Thank you. Thank you, SAG-AFTRA. I'm very proud to be a member for over 60 years. I can't quite believe it. I remember uh, dreaming of being an actress as a teenager, sitting in my bed in Brooklyn with a pint of coffee ice cream uh, and a movie magazine. Sometimes after school, I'd go to the Astor Theater next door to Erasmus High School, which showed foreign films in black and white. And then one Saturday, I vividly remember going to the Lowy's Kings, buying a 25 cent ticket and walking into the middle of Guys and Dolls. And oh my God, everything was so beautiful uh, up on that screen, the colors, the sets, the, the sets, oh my God, unlike our apartment where my mother covered everything in plastic. Um, and then I saw the most beautiful actor, Marlon Brando. And uh, it was my first crush. He was so real, so believable. And I wanted to be the one he fell in love with, not Gene Simmons, you know. That make-believe world was much more pleasant than uh, anything I was experiencing. I didn't like reality. I wanted to be in the movies. Even though I knew I didn't look like the other women on the screen, my mother said, uh, you better learn to type. But I didn't listen. And somehow, <laughs> some way, thank you, God, uh, it all came true. I was very lucky to have two brilliant men on my first film, Funny Girl. William Wyler, the director, and his cinematographer, Harry Stradling, who had... <laughs> These two men were extraordinary. They had no problem with a young woman who had opinions. I could suggest ideas for a scene to Willie and try various lighting effects with Harry, and they never, ever put me down. Looking back, they were really ahead of their time. And that was fantastic. And it set the tone for my whole career, actually. I never went to college. Uh, I always thought acting was my education. In trying to understand the character, to have to do research, uh, immerse yourself in the period, the whole process was fascinating to me. How do you tell the story? How does the camera serve the actors in telling that story? It's really a privilege to be part of this profession. For a couple of hours, people can sit in a theater and escape their own troubles. What an idea. Moving pictures on a screen. And I can't help but think back to the people who built this industry. Ironically, they were also escaping their own troubles. Men like Shmuel Gelpfish, who changed his name to Samuel Goldwyn. Eliezer Mayer, who became Louis B. Mayer. And the four Wansel brothers, who became Warner Brothers. They were all fleeing the prejudice they faced in Eastern Europe, simply because of their religion. And they were dreamers too, like all of us here tonight. And now I dream of uh, a world where such prejudice is a thing of the past. 
I've always... I've always believed in the power of the truth. And I think really good actors rely on that. Uh, the character's truth as well as their own. Recently, my husband and I and some friends saw a wonderful French film called Une Belle Course, which means a beautiful ride. It's about a woman played by an amazing 92-year-old actress, so there's still hope for us girls. <laughs> and she hires a grumpy taxi driver. I always say taxi cab driver, but um, in France, they don't do that. To take her, she hired the driver to take her to her nursing home, where she has to end up in. But first, she wants to revisit her past, the special places in her past. And as he drives her around Paris, they get so involved talking that they wind up sharing the most intimate stories about their lives. And by the end of the film, all of us were in tears because it was so moving and insightful about how you can make a profound connection with someone simply by telling the truth. It reminded me all over again of how much I love film and why we all strive to make the best movies we can. And so many people who have done that are sitting right here tonight in this room. And so once again, I'd like to thank SAG-AFTRA for this fabulous honor, Hello. Um, and to say to my fellow actors and directors, I've loved working with you, playing with you, and inhabiting that magical world of the movies with you. And most of all, I want to thank you for giving me so much joy just watching all of you on the screen. Thank you for that.